Hi folks, I'm Richard Hunter. I recently saw David Barrett's video review of the Fender Mustang Amp, Fender Mustang 1 Amp, on bluesharmonica.com. And uh, in that review, David said that uh, the Mustang 1 had a really good sound, but that it was too complex, and so he couldn't really recommend it to a beginner. Because I have a long history of developing sounds for multi-effects and amp modeling devices, including the Digitech RP devices and the Zoom G3, uh, I decided that uh, an amp that had a great basic sound but that was very hard to work with was something I could do something about. So inspired by that review, I began working on a set of patches for the Fender Mustang series amps. I discovered along the way that there are five Mustang amps, the Mustang 1, which is the only one that's still in production, the Mustang 2, 3, 4, and 5. The Mustang 1 is uh, an amp with an 8-inch speaker and 20 watts of power. It has the same sound engine as all the other Mustangs, which means that it produces some very good sounds, but it's not loud enough for anything but practice or recording or very small jams with a couple of people at most. The Mustang 2 has the same front panel as the Mustang 1, which is to say not a very good front panel, as we'll see in a little while. Uh, but it has more power, 40 watts, and a 12-inch speaker. It's very lightweight. Uh, it sounds good, but it's not uh, a very loud amp. In fact, uh, I don't think it's for very good for anything much more than a jam session in a garage, if that if everybody else in that garage is really cranking it, that amp might get lost there. So the Mustang that I would recommend most to people who intend to perform is the Mustang 3, 4, or 5. The Mustang 3 is an amplifier with 100 watts of power uh, uh, and a 12-inch speaker. It's a nice, potent amplifier and it has uh, plenty of connections to external PAs that you can use to get the volume even louder when you need it. The Mustang 4 has two 12-inch speakers and uh, 150 watts of power. It's like the Mustang 3, only bigger. And the Mustang 5 has 200 watts of power and no speaker cabinet. So you'll need to supply a speaker cabinet of some sort to, to use the Mustang 5 to actually make a sound. I set out to develop a set of sounds, of patches as I call them, configurations of sounds for the Mustang amps that would be immediately usable by blues players and that would take advantage of, uh, of the things that uh, modeled amplifiers do so well, namely bringing the character of different amplifiers to the party one by one. You can't just think of a Mustang amp as an amp having a particular sound like a Fender Bassman or a Deluxe or a Premier Twin 8. You have to think of it as something that has a dozen or so amplifiers living inside it. And in the patches that I've produced, I've tried to create sounds that are both authentically blue sounds and sounds that take advantage of the unique characteristics of the amp models that are in these things. So with that, why don't we see what this stuff sounds like. This is the Fender Mustang 3 amplifier with the master volume set to 4 playing my basic 59 basement patch, which is a basement amplifier without reverb or anything else. <laughs> That's a nice sound, lots of guts. With one turn of this dial, I can switch from this sound to a bassman with a 63 spring reverb. Sounds like this. <laughs> Now a basement with a mono delay, 
This is essentially a slapback delay and it adds a very potent blues feel to it. <laughs> And now, a basement with a lot of gain on it. The basement patches that I've shown you up till now back off the gain in order to emphasize the amp volume and get a little more body in the tone. This one's a high gain sound. <laughs> now for something completely different. This amp model is a basic Vox AC30. The AC30 was a British Invasion rock amp. It was beloved by groups like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. <laughs> Here, it's got a lot of body like the basement, especially coming through an SM58, but it also has a little more high-end edge to it. This is the same amp with a 63 spring reverb. And a 65 spring reverb. Both those reverbs are big, meaty guitar amp reverbs. This is the same amplifier with a signed tremolo. It has a very organish feel to it. You can turn the mod effect and the delay on and off from the front panel just by hitting those switches that are lit up. Here's what this thing sounds like without the tremolo. <laughs> A switch just like that might be something very cool to put into a song, and it's right there on the front panel for you to use. Here's the same AC30 uh, amp model with a tape delay. <laughs> Big 1950s vibe there. And now we have our third amp model so far, the Silvertone amp model. This is a model of a low wattage, junky amplifier for guitarists that was sold at Sears in the 1960s. And it is now prized by harmonica players because it is so rough and tough. <laughs> Here's the same, uh, here's the same amp model with a large room reverb. And with a small room reverb. This uh, device has something in the neighborhood of eight or ten reverbs in it. And they all sound pretty good in the right context. It also has a half dozen delays. Here we have a basic 57 Deluxe. Followed by a 57 Champ with large room reverb. And a 65 Deluxe Reverb. And a 57 Schwinn. Clean, loud, and penetrating, just like the original. And now a basement with a fast Leslie. A 
slow, Leslie. <laughs> In general, the quality of the effects in this device is high, but of course if you want to take the Leslie off completely, all you need to do is hit that mod button. <laughs> Plenty of reverb to work with too, of course. Well, you know, I could go on and on. There's a whole lot of different sounds in this box. I'll show you one, one or two more. Here's a basement with a low octave added. It's like a combined sax and harmonica horn section. Here's, one, here's a clean sound for those occasions where you want a nice acoustic harp just with some reverb. <laughs> It's really a very nice amp, and, it's, and it really plays, like I said, like a bunch of really nice amps. I could go on, but we've already spent enough time on this. I think we've made our point. If you're going to perform, and you want the kind of flexibility and extraordinary sounds that this thing makes available in a single box, uh, with equally adept at performing, jamming, or recording, um, I would go for a Fender Mustang 3 or 4 or 5. 5 if you've got a speaker cabinet or know which one you want to use. I wouldn't use the Fender Mustang 2 or 1 for anything more than home recording and practice. Maybe the Mustang 2 in a jam with one of your friends, but really if you plan to do some serious lifting, get the 3, 4, or 5. And uh, uh, I, would, I would say that with whichever one of those you get, you are likely to be a pretty happy harmonica amp owner. Well, thanks very much. Uh, thanks again to David Barrett for the original inspiration to create this set of uh, sounds. Thanks for your attention, and come check this stuff out at HunterHarp.com. Thanks all. Bye-bye.